I'd like to thank the Leather Crafters and Saddlers Journal for sponsoring my channel. They do a ton for the leather crafting community and have a great publication. I highly suggest checking them out. Hi, I'm Tony Allen Bernier, and today we're going to be going over a free pattern. It's going to be a short brim sun visor pattern. Now, I do it out of leather, but fabric works great for this also. I wanted to mention that the plastic inserts for the brims are universal for all my cat patterns. I designed them all to use that same brim insert. I will also say that the sewing machine's a little bit shaky. I didn't notice while I was using it. It's on wheels so I can wheel it around, but I ended up securing it to the wall for my next video just to make sure that shake wasn't there. I took my parts and these are all just the front panels. I laid them out so I knew exactly how much interfacing I would need to cut out. And then I'll just iron this down to here before I cut my parts out. That way I know they're real accurate. If I cut my parts out first and then iron the interfacing on, you know, it'd probably be all right. But you might get a little bit of stretch as you're pushing around. So I find this way just makes it just a little bit more accurate for me. So I got all the parts cut out. I didn't put interfacing on the back piece. You can if you want. But all the front panels have some interfacing on it and you can see it's going to hold them nice and straight. They're going to look real nice. And these are the two parts for the Velcro. Okay, so I got the front panel and one of the side panels. These are the ones I put that interfacing on. I'm just going to sew them together along this one edge here. I'm going to sew the other one to this side. I like to line the bottom edge up first so the whole piece will be as straight as possible and just compensate that on this edge. Put a couple clips on there. What I did is I took a piece of tape and instead of having it straight across, I put the corner directly across from the needle so I know exactly where the needle is and where the 3 8 inch seam allowance is going to be. Because if I have a straight line, I may not match it up quite, a, quite as well. If you go over it a little, you can't really tell how much you need to come back. If you do it a point like this, not only can you tell exactly straight across from the needle, but if you start to go over it at all, you're going to be able to tell exactly how far you're going over so you can compensate a little bit quicker. I like to try to keep my back stitching back the 3 8 inch too so that it's not going to show after we get all, all our seam allowances sewn up. As soon as that needle starts to come back up is when I switch to reverse. Really watching that 3 8 inch seam allowance here. And again, when I backstitch, I try to stop before I get past the 3 8 inch. That way, any double stitches aren't going to show on the final project. Now I'm going to do some top stitching on each side of that. If you need to, you can tap it with a little hammer or something. But usually get a good press is enough. You can also use a basting tape to make sure everything's held right in place. And that basting tape will also give the parts a little bit more stiffness so they kind of hold their shape. So I'll just place some basting tape not right up to the stitches, just a hair off of that. I don't want it to interfere with my fold at all. I like to do both seams at the same time. You don't want to pull these apart while you're laying this down. Basically, where they lay when you just press down is good. So if you start pulling apart, you're going to get so many stitches showing. That way that seam will look nice. After we do the top stitch, it'll look real professional. And when I'm doing this top stitch, I'll grab a part of the foot and use that as a guide. So for me, this side of this foot right here, I put right dead center on that seam. And it might be a good idea to do a practice piece 
just so you can tell exactly where you want to line everything up. And again, I stop right away. I want to make sure my back stitches are behind that 3 8 inch edge. Also, like to always go on the same side. If I was to do this seam and then just move it over to do the other side, it wouldn't be quite as accurate. If I flip it around so that I can use the exact same spot on the same side of the foot as a guide, I'm going to get that distance the same on both sides. First side is done. Now I just need to get this other side on and check and make sure the bottom is lining up with the other bottom. When you cut your parts out you should be marking the top and the bottom and which part they are. Again I line up the bottom edge here and not just the edge I'm sewing. I would rather the bottom edge line up and I compensate on this seam. Again making sure I got that 3 h inch seam allowance right on the nose. I'm going slow so I can make sure I keep the back stitches behind that 3 8 inch as well. Again, make sure you're not pulling the leather apart at all. Just pressing the seam allowances down on either side. I felt a little bit of a knot right there where I backstitched. So you can make you can make it a little bit flatter just so everything comes together nicer. front panel. Now we're going to be sewing the front and back panel together. And this is basically just the same thing without those extra seams on there. First we're going to sew along the entire top edge. So if you didn't mark the center when you're cutting the parts out, you can fold this in half and mark it. You want to align that center up and then if there's any extra slack on either end, you can just deal with that when we get to that point. So since this back didn't get the interfacing and it is thin and a little bit stretchy, I'm gonna use quite a few clips just to make sure everything stays in place. The whole top edge has clips on it. And if you're looking for these clips, I got them on Amazon. You gotta be careful as you're pulling and sewing because this is hanging over the edge and it will snag and pull, so you're gonna to wanna to make sure you have the slack up on the table. Make sure that needle's down in there whenever you stop. That'll really help hold everything in place while you're rearranging stuff and getting it lined up.
And if you notice it's starting to bunch up in front of the needle, you're going to want to try to get that tucked under there so the pressure foot will grab it. And sometimes you can use a pair of scissors or something to kind of hold and make sure it grabs that and holds it underneath there. So if you're using this basting tape, what you don't want to do is try to pull it real tight in order to get it to follow the stitch line. If anything, you want to give it slack and let it fold up. You, you won't see that once you peel this backing off. So you can see I got excess there now just so I could stay aligned with the stitches. But the actual sticky part of this tape is pretty thin. You can see I got a second row of stitches that I had. I ran out of bobbin thread about three-fourths of the way done. And instead of trying to mash those holes up perfectly and backstitch enough so I can get everything lined up, I just started over and just sewed in just a tiny bit, maybe like a sixteenth of an inch or a little more. And then I, after I did that, I pulled the back row out. So it'll be just a tiny bit shorter, but it won't make any difference. I like to do both sides at the same time. I feel like I get them more accurate. One doesn't get pulled to one side more than the other. So I'll just open this up and have my hand underneath the back side and just press right on that seam. And I'm not pulling these apart at all because then them stitches will open up and you'll see all that. So all I'm doing is pressing these apart. That way that seam looks real nice. But you can see right here I got a little bit of a fold. So you can peel this back up. On this side it works pretty good. On the side that's got this stuff on the back, you can sometimes tear that up so you gotta be careful. See I'm not gonna pull this apart to get it to lay flat. I'm just gonna let it be where it wants. All right, now we're gonna top stitch this. But we don't wanna top stitch each side like we did before since this has got to be folded in half right here we're gonna do these ends first so we're gonna fold in about 3 8 inch what I like to try to do if I can is make sure that seam folds over and matches up with the one underneath it so I folded that end over that 3 8 inch but I don't want a 3 8 inch seam with this next stitch because it's basically a top stitch on the end. So I'm gonna come in just enough. So I'm trying to make the spacing the same as those other top stitches. Make sure you're holding slack up here so it's not pulling this out of whack. Once you get both sides done, we can fold this in half and do the top stitch across the top of this seam. I'm getting the clips across that whole top seam. You want to fold this right at the seam, but if you really yank on it, you might start getting some of them stitches to show. But sometimes it's a good idea to practice a pattern with fabric before you start doing it with leather like this. And this works just fine with fabric, leather, whatever. And the pattern will have the grain lines on it. And with a little explanation if you're not quite sure how to use those. The whole top edge is clipped. And I do want to point out these ends. We're going to sew across that top and do that stitch for both sides. I want to point out that you want to leave these ends open because that's where we're going to stick either the Velcro or your little leather buckles. So you can grab another couple scraps 
bunch them up, maybe do four layers to represent what we're going about to go through and give it a couple tests and dial it in a little better if you need to. Another thing I do is, since this is the back, I always have the front or the part that'll show the most on top because I like to dial up the top stitch to be a little bit more accurate than that bottom one. But again, this isn't that 3 8 inch because this is that decorative top stitch. So I'm going to be going pretty close to the edge and just letting a little bit come over and try to keep an eye on that and make sure that stays the same. And since those back stitches are going to show, I was real careful to get it to go right in the hole that it was just made. That's the other thing, sometimes it's good to practice on fabric, you can rip some stitches out and redo it. Once you make a hole in leather, it's there. the end make sure they're lined up well you don't want one pulled way over and one tucked in just make sure they're both kind of neutral and lined up leave some extra thread just so things stay tight and once it's completed anything left I trim. For this cap I'm going to be using the two pieces of velcro and the two parts that I cut out for that I put some backing on just to kind of help give them a little bit of stiffness. You're going to want these just the tiniest bit bigger than these. So what I do is we're going to give this, I'm going to put a 3 8 inch seam allowance on each side. I like to get the fold on each side situated. If you try to come right from the end, sometimes it peels up this backing. So I come down off the end just a little and grab it from the side and it usually pops up pretty easy. And since we already got the folds in there, it should be pretty easy. You just don't want to stretch it again. If you're placing it down and stretching it out, you're going to get a lot of wrinkles. So I already held one of these up to it to find out where I was sitting after the folds and I figured if I leave just a little bit of space between these two sides like this it should be pretty much the same. Now instead of top stitching those right now that tapes gonna hold it in place and I'm just gonna bring one of these ends in and what I'm gonna do first is peel back these corners just a little bit and bring them in just a little. Just a tiny bit. So that end is just a tiny bit more narrow. That way this won't stick over the edges. So I'll put just a tiny little piece of double stick in there and make sure it's in from the edges so it doesn't come out, doesn't come out and show. That's another 3 8 inch fold. It's always a good idea to do a dry fit of your parts. And you're not going to want this all the way up to the edge here. You want it back just a little bit. And we're going to keep in mind where these will be hidden. It won't matter if you come down to this edge here because that's going to get sewn into the cap. But as long as we're away from these two edges. I'm 
Now, this could be done without the tape, but for stuff like this especially, it helps so much. You're not fighting it all the whole way. All right, since the Velcro's on this side, the leather's going to show on this side. I'm going to start back where it's going to be tucked into the cap. Do my back stitching. Sometimes you have to turn this manually to line up right where you want that next stitch to be. I'll do that to the other one and then we'll sew them into the ends of that cap. I got the two ends sewn up and I'd like to point something out and I mentioned before wait till that needle is coming back up when you hit reverse and stuff and the same goes for corners because the needle wasn't on its way back up yet when I turned this and started sewing this way so it skipped that center hole. You gotta wait till that needles on its way back up then stop it turn it while the needles still in there turn it and then keep going otherwise you're gonna skip corners like that but what I'm gonna do before I sew these into the ends of this is sew right along this bottom edge I'm not gonna do even that far off the edge just real close to the edge itself so first I look and see like if one of these ended up being a little bit shorter than the other I want the long one on bottom so I can make sure I catch both edges, but this looks pretty good on both sides. So I'll throw some clips on here just to make sure everything's straight when I sew that line. So I'm just sewing along here to kind of hold everything in place while I do the next several steps. So I'm just going to nick this edge. because all This whole edge is going to be folded up and hidden towards the end anyway here. And again, if you need to, make sure that flows under there straight. Make sure you got this up on the table so it's not over the edge pulling. Sometimes if you get too close to these clips, it'll start pulling up or down a little bit too, so keep an eye on that. And you can see I'm just barely nicking that edge just to hold everything in place. You're going to want to make sure you get these in here the right way. So what I like to do is take a look, which one do I want facing out, which one do I want facing in. Try to make the better one facing out, obviously. So since I messed that corner up on this one, I'm going to have that one facing in. Just stick these together, how they're going to need to be on the cap. And this is the back of the cap that's going to be against your head. So this is how it's going to be, like this. So I'll make sure everything's how I want it before I stick these in here. So you're going to stick this in here, make sure that Velcro is coming back past that 
at least a couple eighths of an inch. And you're going to go up to the top. Press that up towards the top so that way when you come back and we sew the sweatband and stuff on, we'll have enough slack on the bottom for that to fold up because we're going to need to sew it just above that seam. So once that's up towards the top and it looks straight coming out of there, I'll throw a couple clips on here. I'll come from the front side of the cap so I can try to line this needle up in the holes already there and I start on the bottom where that's going to be folded over anyway so these little back stitches I'm going to do will be hidden. So I get the needle almost coming down in there and I'm going to lift it up and make sure I get right into one of the previous stitching holes. You're probably not going to be able to hit all of them. And you can wait to do that line until now. But I like to back stitch and go across it a couple times anyways, so I'm not too concerned with that. But instead of just back stitching, I'm going to actually lift this pressure foot up and come back across it forward so that I can make sure I hit right on top of those previous stitches. And then I can back stitch where this is going to be hidden and folded again. I left them two together so that I can make sure I just get this in the right way. Butt it up towards the top. I can actually peel these apart now. I know that's in the right way, peel that apart, make sure that's in there far enough so the Velcro will get caught by the stitches. Starting at the bottom again, and I'm making sure the good side's facing up so I can really watch where I'm putting my stitches here. Instead of back stitching, I'll flip this around so I can really see where I'm going. Now all we need to do is put the brim together and sew that to the cap. And you're going to notice there's two different sizes of these. The bigger one I throw on the bottom and then I start clipping, matching these corners up right here in these corners because we're going to have to ease some of that fabric together that way it'll wrap around the front of that brim insert nicely. You can see we got quite a discrepancy now so what I'm going to do is find that center and just pull it up right there so there's the same amount of that bunched up slack on each side. And then I just keep going in half, so you can see it's all up front or all up back. I'll kind of go like that, find the halfway spot, and throw another clip right on that half spot. And then just keep doing that. And you can even, because the top one's a little smaller, you can even stretch it out just a little bit as you're putting the clips on. And since I'm easing this fabric, I like to put a lot of clips on just to hold everything where I want it. So as I'm pulling the clips back off, I still got a lot holding everything in place.
when you press down the slack on the bottom will kind of even its way and spread its way out all right now we're going to sew around that edge but we're going to go less than that 3 8 that way we don't have as much seam allowance because when you put this inside out and put the brim in it sometimes that seam allowance will want to bunch up a little bit so we're going to go probably like a 2 8 inch seam allowance Before I put this plastic brim in, I fold it right at that seam, and I can tell you which one is the bigger one, and that's the one that's going to come around to the short side. So this smaller piece, that's the side that both seam allowances will be folded to. I'll just start it in there. And once you get it going, you're, you're going to want to make sure you have the same amount of slack on each end. Mine's way off, but I'm just kind of working it in right now, just getting it situated. And what I'll do is I'll grab this in my hand and then press my thumb on the plastic a little to kind of stretch it. You need at least a couple clips so that when you pull the other way, you don't. So you're going to want to stretch it a little bit so that when you put the curve in the cap, when you put the curve in this brim, it's not going to bunch up. So you're going to want to pull on whichever side isn't lined up. You want that seam to be right on the edge. Before I put too many clips, I make sure I got the same amount of slack on each side past that plastic. You can come in here with a modeling spoon or a creaser or something to make sure you get that seam allowance both on that short both on the same side as the smaller piece. This is another situation where I use a lot of clips. Make sure you get that fold right up to the edge. If you have one of these guides that can help with this step, I'll pull a couple of those clips off just to kind of see where I'm lined up. With this cap, it's really up to preference. I like to get close to that seam allowance without going over it. So somewhere like right there is pretty good. So if you don't have a guide, you can mark with another piece of tape or something the seam allowance and just ride right next to it. But either way, what you're going to want to actually do is start in the corner and not that far away because that way it holds all these layers together and this little corner is going to get hidden anyway. And then before you get to the plastic, you're going to, from that corner, you're going to quickly watch that line. Now my plastic's right up against that guide or if you have a piece of tape, you want it right up against that line for your seam allowance before that needle is hitting that plastic.
Now I'm coming up the edge, so as soon as I feel this get off the plastic for like two stitches, then I'll lift that and go back towards this corner again. I find in the end that helps get this tucked in underneath when we do the final step of putting this on. If you have this guide, it helps quite a bit. I do notice that if you're trying to do a whole bunch of these in a row, it's not going to be accurate enough. You're going to notice it kind of isn't quite the same spacing. So I usually come off, you know, maybe like a quarter, half inch even. Before I do the second row of stitches, sometimes this leather, when it's thin and floppy, can move around a little much for my taste. So I'll grab a couple clips and get them right butted up to that plastic. So it just holds everything nice for me while I'm doing that. So this one, I'll just butt it up against that guide or your tape, whatever you're using, and start off of the plastic again. And because this can kick up, I'll keep my finger by the guide to hold it down so it doesn't kick up over the top of it. I will mention too, you might want to grab a little scrap. And if you leave me a message and you order brim inserts and you want a little scrap, if I have some laying around, I'll throw it in there so you have a piece to mess with and dial in your tension. I usually have some laying around. So you can see the shorter one has that 3 8 inch excess past the plastic. So what I'll do is I'll trim this other side so it's about the same. You don't have to do that. It just helps me a little bit. And you can see there's some more excess right here. So I'll trim that just a little bit maybe. All right, now to put the bill on the cap part itself. And I have the front, and this is the top, and this is the bottom. I have the front facing me, so this is gonna wanna be something like that. So what I do is the top of the bill, I'll just place against the top of that. And you're gonna wanna try to get it as centered as possible. And you can put the clips on and then look at these seams to see how close they are to each side. Really try to get this as centered as possible. And you're gonna to wanna to use like a 3 8 inch seam allowance on this. And if you didn't trim this, just go off of this one. And you want that 3 8 inch right up against the plastic. You can flip it around. Now you can already start to see which side might be a little bit off. And I can move this to the edge of my table or just fold these down like this. Looks pretty straight. I'm not really pulling on this, I'm just, it's lifting itself up and I'm just directing it. If you stretch it too much, it can kind of make some differences in each side if you're not stretching it the same. You'll have little folds and stretches. And then I'll just work this side up. And I'm just feeling for where the plastic is and then trying to line it up with a 3 8 inch seam allowance on this main section. And don't worry about getting it too perfect now because you'll be pulling clips off and making sure everything's real good and straight before you get going. So you just jump into this, get it as best you can, and then start making adjustments. So 
what I do now is you can see it's quite a bit off that seam is past these stitches and on this one it's on the opposite side so what I'll do is grab a lot of these off of here and then kind of think about halfway it would basically be that center of the seam right on those stitches so I'll come over to this side first and line it up where I think that spot would be make sure you're getting all the layers in there so I think that should be about right and then I'll work my way from that clip all the way back across and if I'm off it should be pretty close so then little small adjustments are easier to make so this is going to want to stand up just make sure you're feeling where the plastic is and try to keep that 3 8 inch seam allowance and like I said before you can trim this excess here so you can just line up the two edges if that's easier for you Another thing you can do too is put, after you trim that, put a very small stitch line right on the edge like we did to this piece. We'll just hold all that together. like it's pretty close I had to give it a little bit of a pull to get it there so that stretch I'll pull some of these back off just let it even itself out bit off still so I'll bring that in just the tiniest bit so I like to give it a one more check and look at that seam allowance because I have the clips butted right up to the plastic so if it's off I'm going to be able to see it and I can make a couple little adjustments here and there if I need to right off the edge of the plastic there might get a little bit long right here so I'll pull a couple off and just pull that away from the edge Just taking a look to make sure each side is the same height coming off of there just in case some of my stitching was a little off and my seam allowances weren't exactly the same looks pretty good sewing this can be done on a flatbed machine and if you watch my flat cap video you'll see how I do that how I maneuver these parts underneath there and stuff but I'm gonna do this on my cylinder arm here so I'll start right on that corner And this first one, I'm not going right up to the plastic. I'll do that when I put the sweatband on. But I'm putting the plastic up against the outside part of this pressure foot. And I went just off the edge of it to hold it down well. You 
can see the edge of this pressure foot's butted up against the plastic. And when I sew the sweatband on, it'll actually ride up on top of it. So this stitch will be hidden. It's just holding this on here nice for us. So since I didn't trim this, what I'm watching is the edge of that plastic. I want where that next seam is going to be to be at that 3 8 inch seam allowance all the way around. So I'm making sure that edge is 3 8 inch away from this edge, not this one. And I go just off and then back stitch back onto it really helps hold all that down. Since that stitch wasn't right on that plastic, there was a little bit of slack so I just put some clips just to hold everything back and taunt. So what we're going to do, so we're going to start on the outside of the cap and this is going to fold underneath right here. And if you wanted to, you could even wait to put these on until now, so that way you're not stitching through there a bunch. I like to go through a few times to really hold these in place. But if you want it to look a little cleaner, wait till after this is sewn on, and then when you fold this in, you could just do a single stitch across there. It won't look as bulky, but these won't be quite as solid in there either. So again, this is the front of the cap. And I'm going to sew just above that other stitch line here. I got it folded underneath and I'm keeping it as close to the edge of the sweatband material as I can. I'm going to start by turning this get it placed just right. You can look underneath to make sure you get that same seam allowance. get up to this plastic this is going to be butted up against that plastic that you can feel under there so I'll do that and kind of eyeball about what the seam allowance is going to be so this kind of eases into that if there's any discrepancies there that up against there and feel where that needs to be and I'll give it just the tiniest bit a stretch if you do too much this is gonna dig into your forehead here pause frequently and make sure that needles down in there might have trouble hopping up onto the layers of leather here. You don't want to be sewing through the plastic, just right up butted to it. So I'm actually pressing this into the plastic just a little bit. this side of the pressure foot is riding on top of that plastic. And the step can also be done on just a standard flatbed machine. And if you watch my flat cap video, I'll show you how to do it in there. I prefer the cylinder arm whenever I can use it.
if you have any issues with this step, that previous step, you can put those stitches right up against the plastic. You just may see a secondary line of stitches after the fact, but it'll hold better if, if you have any issues with slack during this process. When I get to this point where it falls off of that thickness, I like to give this just a tiny bit of pull. I like to give it just a little bit of stretch so it doesn't bunch up right there and dig into your side of your head. You want to stop back far enough so you can tuck this side in and you're going to go about a 3 8 inch from that seam. Sometimes it's good to tap this with a lighter just to keep it from fraying too much. And this is going to get tucked underneath just like the other side. So you have a couple options. You can leave this open and just stitch across right here to hold that down and then let the fold just kind of sit as is. Because you can also add a stitch right across this edge to hold that fold. You can also just fold this in and then sew across here to hold all that together right here. Now oh, after that one, this Velcro's really in there. That should never tear out. And get that folded underneath where you want it. I'm going to start this needle down and place it right in that last stitch. That just even reinforces that Velcro strip even more. If you pull this too tight, it will want to be straight out like this, digging into your forehead. But you can see this will be a nice fit. Put the sweat band in there. I usually don't put a seam across here, but what you can do is get this situated right where you want it. And then put another seam right on that edge to hold that fold up.